So I know that I'm a little bit late to the party on this, but we've got to talk about the anti-quarantine protests that have been popping up across the country. I believe that now more than 20 states have had these types of protests where people defy lockdown orders, self-quarantine orders, and they demand that their governors reopen the economy. Now, this isn't something that is unique to the United States. We're seeing these types of protests pop up in India, in Brazil, and Jair Bolsonaro actually joined the protests himself. So this isn't a unique issue here. The problem is that this is going to make these types of stay-at-home orders last longer because if you gather in these large crowds and you spread the virus, then guess what the solution ultimately will be if it does spread more? We have to stay home longer to try to flatten the curve, try to stop the spread. So, I mean, these people don't realize that they're making matters worse. And keep in mind that most Americans actually do support a national lockdown, not because they enjoy it, but because we're all adults and we realize that it's necessary even if we hate it. But over the weekend, mostly right-wing Trump-supporting protesters defied lockdown orders and they demanded that the lockdown be ended and they did this by chanting about wanting to go back to work. Some of them opened carried weapons, others suggested that the pandemic was a hoax, and there were even some of them that called for violence and others who cheered on said calls for violence as you'll see in this video I fought in Vietnam against the socialist communists I'm sorry we didn't kill them all we're under attack by China and the Democrats are on the Chinese side, and the media is on the Democrat side. My guys didn't die in vain. You and your children and your grandchildren are worth dying for. And their freedom and their liberty must be paid for. And all I'm asking you is to vote them out. Because I don't want to have to shoot them again. But I will if I have to. That was batshit fucking insane. And I love how they think that they're the ones being patriotic as they literally talk about killing other Americans. No, you're not the ones who are being patriotic. Your behavior here is the antithesis of patriotism. Because when you say, I disagree with the particular policy of my governor, therefore, if we don't vote them out, they should be killed, you're not being patriotic. You're being authoritarian. You're being a tyrant. Now, I want to stress that most people don't agree with these individuals. They're a vocal minority. I think that most people, 60% of Americans, according to one poll, are sensible enough to realize that, you know, this isn't an infringement on our liberties. I'm not saying that this crisis won't be weaponized as 9-11 was to, you know, basically get rid of the Fourth and Eighth Amendments. We have them, but they're meaningless. So, you know, there are going to be political ramifications that we have to deal with as a society. But it's not you losing liberty if you can't leave your house, right? Because as, you know, Wendell Oliver Holmes Jr. put it, the liberty to swing your fist ends at your neighbor's nose. Meaning that you don't have the liberty to endanger the lives of other people. We have the liberty to be protected from you spreading your disgusting germs, right? And this is an issue, but part of the problem is that Republicans are egging them on. They're fanning the flames rather than basically saying, here's a solution to make sure that you're not going to be ruined economically because of this pandemic. These are the policies we're carrying out. No, instead, Donald Trump said that they are very responsible. That's a direct quote. They're very responsible. You have Stephen Moore say that they are like modern day Rosa Parks. You have Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida reopening beaches. You have Georgia Governor Brian Kemp listening to protesters here and reopening salons and gyms, which are probably going to become makeshift disease spreading factories, but they don't care. They're not about proposing solutions. They're just basically egging people on because this is a nice out for them, right? Rather than actually governing competently and effectively, they see this as an out. Donald Trump has an interest in opening, reopening the economy, whatever that may mean, as quickly as possible because an incumbent president always takes the blame 
for economic downturn. So he knows this. He's very aware of this. So if people are able to shift blame on this to Democratic governors, that really helps Donald Trump. So this is why he's encouraging this. It's because it's politically expedient. And it's not just politicians. It's the propaganda apparatus of the Republican Party who's also encouraging this. If you watched Fox News, I mean, you could pick any show. But particularly uh, America's Karen. She also was suggesting we've got to reopen the economy, whatever that means. Born of rebellion and revolution, we are ready to fight. It's in our DNA. We're ready to fight the virus, ready to fight to get back to work, and ready to fight to reopen our country in a safe and strategic way. We get it. We're not stupid. We know to wash our hands, wear a mask, and keep our distance. We know to look for signs of the virus. We look to protect the vulnerable. We appreciate the numbers need to be contained as we go through the three phases of reopening. We know the virus can come back, and we will be ever vigilant to make sure a complete reopening is dependent upon the data. Now, we've been sheltered in place for weeks and we are not children. We are capable of using our God-given common sense to protect ourselves and others. But there has to be a balance between physical safety and economic survival. More and more people becoming unemployed, 22 million so far. People watch their savings, their livelihood, and their dreams disappear. For some, there will simply be no business to rebuild. For others, there will be no coming back from the depths of depression, alcohol, or drug abuse. Canceled elective surgeries, prolonged enormous physical pain, suffering, and further stress and depression. Think about how absurd this situation is. COVID-19 has killed 40,000 Americans. That's the equivalent of 13 9-11s. Imagine for just a second that we had a terrorist attack in this country that killed 40,000 Americans. Would America's Karen, Judge Jeanine Pirro, be saying the same thing? Would Donald Trump be saying the same thing? No, they would be beating the war drums. In fact, Republicans would be beating the war drums the loudest. But yet, we see this threat that took 40,000 American lives, and that number is still rising, and they're willing to reopen the economy immediately. And Trump even questioned why we can't just allow COVID-19 to wash over America. Look, we don't get to choose between saving American lives and the economy. These things essentially are inextricably linked, right? You can't just say, well, we sent them back to work so the economy spared. That's not the way that things work. Life is a lot more complicated than that. But one thing that America's Karen said that I think is apt is that people are hurting. That's why they're protesting. And I agree with her there. There will be civil disobedience, societal unrest. That's going to continue. But people shouldn't take to the streets and say, we want to go back to work, right? This is a part of a life's worth of propaganda, brainwashing Americans. What people should be doing is demanding universal basic income what donald trump should be doing rather than saying oh they're very responsible they're staying six feet apart and wearing masks when they're not rather than doing that he should be saying here's my solution i'm proposing this stimulus package that's going to put money in your hands but he's not doing that he's not doing that we got the 1200 dollars stimulus package and his treasury secretary steve mnuchin delusionally thinks that that can last people for 10 weeks, which shows you how to touch they are. But I mean, here's the thing. You don't get to placate these protesters and pretend to care about them. Donald Trump, Stephen Moore, America's Karen, Judge Jeanine Pirro. You don't get to pretend to care about their needs and understand their suffering if you don't have the correct solution here. Don't encourage them to sacrifice their lives for capitalism. Encourage them to demand something from their government. Encourage the government. I mean, Judge Jeanine Pirro has a platform to where Donald Trump will most likely be watching. She can say, here's what we need right now. 2000 bucks a month. Boom. Easy. This will help immediately so many Americans. But they're not doing that. They're not doing that. 
So we're in this horrible predicament where people are actually suffering. We all now know someone who's been suffering, who lost their jobs, who don't know what the future holds. I had two nieces cancel weddings, one of them laid off. I know people who are suffering firsthand from this. We all do. This pandemic is going to touch probably all of us, both directly and indirectly, because we're going to either suffer from it or know someone who suffers from it. So the answer isn't to reopen the economy and get everyone back to work and possibly get them killed. That's not what's going to be good for the economy. What we need to do is propose policy prescriptions to this pandemic. For every crisis, there is a policy response that you can implement if you care about people. So rather than patting these protesters on the head and pretending to care about them, as crazy as they may be, Donald Trump doesn't care about them. Donald Trump desperately wants Democratic governors to take the blame for his failing because that benefits him. And if he can make everyone think something that they're already conditioned to believe, that, you know, the correct answer isn't to strengthen our social safety net, but immediately send them back to work, then that's really great for Donald Trump. And boy, wouldn't it be great if we had an opposition party that was as effective at messaging or even half as effective at messaging as the Republican Party is. It's frustrating because on one hand, these people are absolutely insane and they're deluded, but they are in pain. And on a human level, I really feel for them, right? So it's like, I feel bad making fun of them and, you know, saying that they're crazy as they tout their Trump waving flags because they are like, you have to be stupid to support Donald Trump after you saw the way he's governed for the last four years, after you saw his mishandling of the crisis. But at the same time, if you're struggling, if you feel like your material wealth is vanishing before your very eyes, you are afraid and you're looking for answers and you want something to change. And the number one thing that Americans are going to opt for oftentimes is what's most familiar to them. Now, thankfully, most Americans don't agree with them, but these protesters think that the way that they can get out of this crisis is by just going back to work, crossing their fingers, and hoping that they don't catch this disease. But that's not what's going to benefit their lives. If we reopen the economy and send everyone back and just disregard the recommendations from the World Health Organization, and the CDC, it's not going to get better for people. It's going to get worse. It will further tank the economy but nobody knows this nobody has an idea they just want answers they want solutions that haven't been given to them by either party to be fair twelve hundred dollars a month in a bill that is a gigantic multi-trillion dollar bailout for companies including the cruises which aren't even american companies because they don't have american addresses i mean what do you have left but to be angry and lash out and be afraid right now. So these types of protests, civil disobedience on a mass scale, civil unrest, this will continue so long as people struggle and suffer. And there's just no solutions. I mean, look to what Canada is doing. It's not a perfect response, but it's better than the United States. Look to any other developed country. And the response has been better, more compassionate. But we don't get that here. And part of the problem is that everyone's brainwashed. So they don't know to ask for it or demand it. So the situation sucks.